Yo, what is going on my fellow weebs? Chrono here and welcome back to the channel. So we've got a new weapon, that means I have a new comparison video for you guys today. We'll be going over the new Exilia weapons and seeing just how strong they are comparatively to the weapons we currently have in the meta. But before we jump into that, if you're new here, as always, my name is Chrono. I finally recovered PSO2 content. Would much appreciate to subscribe as we work our way towards that 10k mark, hopefully, by the end of this year. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. So two quick disclaimers. First off, if you guys were on stream with me yesterday, you would know that I actually already recorded this video on stream. They're going back and editing it. There were just some things that I left out and just some things I didn't really like about my recording originally. And uh, if you guys follow my you know, recording process at all, I've you know, complained about it long enough on social media. I tend to re-record a lot of my videos when I go back and edit them and I just don't like them. So this happens to be one of those situations. When I get better about recording videos on stream, you guys will be a part of those more often. I know you guys were excited to be a part of that video, but unfortunately, it just was not up to the standard that I wanted to at that time. Um, the second disclaimer is these videos are meant to just provide information. They are meant to be a bit of info that you can make an informed decision on how you decide to go about your weapon progression process. You do not have to go by the information that's provided here. It is simply there for just that information. At the end of the day, you make your own decisions. You choose how you play the game itself. I'm not your parent, <laughs> so uh, no one's going to freak out or anything along those lines on you. By all means, uh, do what you got to do. But we're going to go over exactly how strong these weapons are and where I recommend personally uh, taking your progression path if or depending upon where you are uh, currently in NGS. So I'm going to give a quick disclaimer. We're going to flash over to the, uh, the Visiphone slash wiki and uh, check out the stats on these weapons. So here we are over on the NGS wiki. As you can see, the Exilia weapons are right below the Wingard because they are actually slightly weaker than the Wingard, um, both in base damage as well as potency. You're going to have a bit less base damage, which does matter quite a bit. But what's more important is the potential, the potency and the potential is actually 2% less than that of Wingard. So if you're coming into this thinking, hey, is this stronger than my Wingard? The answer is no. Technically, the answer realistically is not yet, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So taking a look at the Exilio weapons, you can see the base damage. Cool. No element, of course. Damage variance is normal. And then we have the potency, 41% potency. I said the potential, excuse me, I always mix potential and potency, but potency is what matters, right? Potential is 41% potency and photon blast gauge charge when attacking increase plus 10%. Now, there's a very important notion about this plus 10% and something that people always kind of talk about. And it's even going to be mentioned when we take a look at the damage calculator. Um, this plus 10% is awesome, but you have to keep in mind if you're not generating an extra photon blast across an entire fight, or if you're not getting a photon blast in a more advantageous position, it's placebo. There are a lot of ways right now that we have to increase our Photon Blast charge gauge, um, whether it be via EX Augments, whether it be via subclass choice, or whether it be via Fixa on our armor. There are plenty of ways of doing this, and if you are close to hitting a threshold, like let's say, for example, you're doing an Arcs Record and you're just about to hit enough to either get a second PB or just get a PB like during a down on like the most opportune location, then this might be a benefit to you. However, if it doesn't do either one of those things, it's purely placebo. It doesn't actually help out. And even in the case of the arcs record, even if this gets you a PB in a better advantageous position, but it causes you overall to lose damage comparatively to maybe a wing guard you were using, because you have to use this to get the benefit, right? Um, if this causes you to lose overall damage and it causes the fight to take longer, well, then it was a net damage loss. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at these Exilio weapons. And a lot of people like to see, oh my God, Photon Blast Charge Gauge is increasing damage. Not necessarily. Um, you can't attribute a percentage of damage to that, but technically speaking, if that, that not, neither of those situations happen, nothing effectively has actually changed. So this is your second warning. We're going to be jumping over to the damage calculator now. It is a bit of a flashbang, so uh, we'll be jumping over in three, two, one. So here we are over on Cakewalk's damage calculator. If you don't know who Cakewalk is, one who actually made this entire damage calculator, super awesome dude. Hangs up in our Discord, so if you have any questions, feel free to jump in a Discord. You're more than welcome to ask them there. Not just about the damage calculator, but anything else when it comes to NGS or any other games that we actually play. Um, he also streams, so it'd be super cool if you guys were to toss Cakewalk a follow. If you uh, just click on the name, pop over to the stream, ask questions, all that good stuff. Cake is awesome and is very passionate about this whole damage situation. So you will get accurate and helpful information 
if you were to go over uh, over to Cakewalk or if you happen to find any mistakes, just let them know. So scrolling on down, we're going to take a look at how we have ourselves set up. In case you're curious how this works, by the way, I've done plenty of videos showing off how to use this damage calculator. Um, or you can always ask me directly or you can ask Cake, more than welcome to. Uh, but we're not going to go into that in this video or this video would be way too long. And I'm trying to do my best not to make these videos super, super long. So what we're doing is a comparison. We're going to start with the Aerodim. We're going to go with the Fatal 1 Aerodim because that's what most people are using right now. You can either go with Fatal or Attack. Uh, I talked about in a previous video where Attack actually can end up being stronger with a proper augment setup since potency floor is getting higher and higher. Um, but most people are going to be running Fatal 1 if you're playing... Um, What's the class? If you're playing uh, Slayer, you're running Termina. If you're playing Ranger, uh, what's it? Ranger, Force, or I believe also Tector, you're using Wix. And if you're playing a Bandak, you don't need my video. You already know that you're playing the right, the, the strongest Fixa. The augments, you already have them totally laid out. You know exactly what's going on. Yes, a Bandak is stronger. It always has been stronger. It always will be stronger. It's by about 3%, so it's not the end of the world. I actually don't know if a Bandak comparatively is better than Wix um, or Termina. I'm curious about that. We'll have to look into that in a video. I'm pretty sure Bandak is kind of better than everything, but it's a, a topic for another day. Um, so we have my current setup here. Uh, yes, Hysterical, Shortage, and a Shortage HP are actually the best in slot setup. If you can maintain it, even if you can't maintain it, it's still really, 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 really good. Because even in the worst case scenario, Shortage HP Starling is still 4.5%, which is pretty much on par with everything else you would put in that slot. You have to have Hysterical and Shortage PP together. You cannot have these to be separate. I mean, you can have shortage PP separate, but hysterical strength without shortage PP burn is pretty pointless. Um, and then, of course, this is the setup here. If you're going for the fix attack setup, you're basically swapping out uh, Glen Gigas Maste for uh, Grand Dread Keeper 2, essentially. And then in my setup currently, um, I would be swapping out Might 4. This is actually Might 4 instead of Might 5. Uh, that is a mistake. Hold on. Yeah, can I just, there we go. This should be Might 5. This is Might 5, yes? Okay, there we go. And Might 5 is incorrect. I'll have to let Cakewalk know about that. One sec. Just a quick little change in the post and G sheet. And if we pop back over here, bam, Might 5 is correct now. It's 3.5. So you can go ahead and fix those here. Might 5, Might 5, and Might 5. It's worth mentioning that if you're going for the potency floor setup, you're swapping out this might or doable or whatever you happen to have here um, with high Kavar Domina for the extra potency floor. It actually nets you more damage overall um, with the attack setup. And that does actually net you overall more damage, but it's like by such a small amount, it's not worth switching all of your gear up for, to be perfectly honest. But that again is a sidetrack. Let's get into what we actually here for. So here's the gear we have going on. It's on Linitasis, or these are on Ania. It doesn't really matter. Um, we can put this on, I guess I had one on Itasis and the rest on Ania. We'll just put all these tasks just for posterity's sake. Doesn't really make much of a difference in the calculation itself. It's all pretty much even across the board. What you're mostly concerned about is the weapons comparatively against each other, and they all get compared with these armor sets anyway. So, how does it look when we're looking at the comparisons? Again, Aerodim, Fatal 1, most people have this, so it's totally fine. Let's scroll on over. Of course, we're doing the comparison as a bouncer. If you do comparison as a Slayer, it's slightly skewed differently, but it's not by enough to actually matter. It still works mostly the same way. So when we're taking a look at Aerodim, so we have our Aerodim here. See our baseline is right here. Well, if we take a look at Exilio, um, it's only 0.11%. So Exilio is stronger, but by less than 1%. So that puts us in a bit of a weird spot, and we're going to talk about where that's actually worth. And yeah, you can see if you just take a look at something like, I don't know, freaking a bandak even a bandak on the same setup oh, a bandak actually and a bandak one is not stronger that's surprising hmm i figured it would be way way further ahead i wonder how that works out anyway we're not gonna go again this is a topic for another video um so i could be wrong about that it's worth uh, investigating we probably will investigate that since we have to have content anyway uh, but as you can see, comparatively to Exilio, it's almost the same, actually. Um, building in Exilio right now is not actually that beneficial for most people. We're going to talk about where it actually is helpful for some, but it's not that beneficial for most people. Um, now, if you're still using Argen Cool, 
for the love of God, <laughs> get off of that thing. Please, I beg of you, at least make an Aerodim or an Exilea. We'll talk about where you should go for if you're just coming from our gen pool, I'm perfectly honest. But like when you're looking at these two comparatively, even if you look at them in the case of attack, I mean, like you can see a fixed attack actually works out being a little stronger right now because of how the setup goes out. But um, you can see that it's less than like 0.02%. <laughs> Of a difference between the two of them it's just not very much you actually end up in a situation where you don't really need to worry that much about exilio so if your question is i've got an aerodim do i need to upgrade an exilio not quite just yet now let's go ahead and talk about the situation where you do want to go ahead and look at maybe getting an exilio or what you should do with your exilios so as you can see exilios are selling for a decent amount they are still fairly expensive, more expensive than I'd want them to be given the kind of state these weapons are in. Um, they're still above, like, you know, I, I think the launcher right now would just drop below one mil. I'm selling two of them. Um, the soaring blades, I can see, is, they're just below two mil. It's not really in a position where I'm like, all right, cool, I can get a bunch of these and smash them together for Fixa. Though it's not in a position where I'm like, yeah, I want to use my Fixa upgraders to uh, push this Fixa higher. So it's in a bit of a limbo spot at the moment. I'm hoping with the release of um, with Dark Falls Dalian uh, rank two or the, the newer version of that, basically, whenever that comes out, uh, these will drop more often and more plentifully. But we can go ahead and smash these together for Fixa and high level fixes. And I don't have to worry about, you know, burning my uh, my guaranteed upgrades for Fixa. Now, granted, if this gets into a situation where it's not worth smashing them together, eventually I will probably use those and push the Fixa higher. But it is kind of in a weird spot where I'm not a, the big biggest fan of it. All right, so that brings us to the faded question. Who builds this weapon? Well, if you're someone who is just getting back into the game, you have eventually, essentially nothing, right? You're just rocking your Argen cool, and you heard me say, get rid of that thing, and you're like, but, but this is all I have. This is the weapon you build. Um, now, you, I say that with an asterisk. It depends on what you're building. If you're someone who just builds an LC, you're just trying to build enough that you're not really throwing around the people that you're around, but you know not so much that you're breaking the bank when you're trying to gear up then yeah this is actually a pretty okay time to build this weapon now if you're thinking to yourself but mr streamer what do i put on my weapon like what ex augments do i use what what cheap freebie augments can i get that are so powerful we have a video for that check the video description um now for the other use case now let's say you're someone who is rocking an aerodim you have LC Augs on it, and you're not really looking at moving past that. You're going to be chilling with those LC Augments, and you're okay with what you've got. You're probably thinking, yeah, then I should probably switch over, right? Not really. Um, so here's the thing. We don't really know how the new upgrade system works. We also don't know if there's going to be another weapon. It's okay for someone who has nothing built up because you want to get something going. But if you already have something built up, you're essentially just investing about 2.5 mil in upgrading another weapon to transfer the same augments over and not get much of a damage difference. Is it going to be stronger? Absolutely. By much? Not really. So even if you're rocking an Aerodim, even if you're rocking kind of like the Lobi augments, I would just go ahead and chill. You can if you'd like to, if you feel confident that they're not going to, you know, totally release something else or screw you over or anything along those lines, by all means, jump over to the weapon. But I would urge caution and wait until we actually know what the systems are going to be. As I've said about everything in this game, wait till we have it confirmed before you make your informed decision. Now, if you're someone who already has an Aerodim, who's built it up towards best in slot because you knew that you'd be able to augment transfer off of the Aerodim onto the next weapon, don't. Wait, for the same reason I told the previous people, hold off at augment transferring over. The moment being, you're basically in the same position. You're basically paying 2.5 mil worth of upgrade mats or basically 2.5 mil in general um to go ahead and switch over for not much of a damage increase and we don't know how the new system works again if you feel confident that everything is going to be fine then feel free you're more than welcome to i know a lot of people have been itching to get a hold of a new weapon and i'm kind of the same way so if you feel like that's okay and you can take that risk that's totally fine but i would urge caution since you cannot freely transfer off of the new exilia weapons like you can the aerodims so just keep that in mind when you're looking at swapping over. And for my last camp of people, my air, my wing guard people, um, just don't just wait. 
<laughs> collect your Exileo, maybe you know sell a couple of them as you go along. I'm personally selling the Exileos that I get just because the pricing right now is just in the weird middle ground. If it was lower, I would keep them and smash them. Uh, if it was higher, I would definitely sell them. But like it's just in this very, very strange, strange middle ground where I feel like the prices are going to tank eventually, but they're high enough to the point where I'd rather make the money off of them. So if you're one of those Wingard guys, I would just go ahead and hold on to your Wingard, much like myself. Um, this is definitely not stronger than your Wingard. Your Wingard is still going to be best in slot, at least until October. Now, I will say after October, you're probably going to create her that thing. I'm just joking. You'll likely use it as maybe a PB stick. Who knows? Um, since I don't think it's actually worth augment transferring weapons at this point in time, I think it's actually going to be better just to rebuild your weapon, at least for right now. But we'll have to see what we have available to us at that time. And that's pretty much about it. That covers everything you need to know when it comes to the Exileo weapons. Uh, as far as whether or not you should get them, how strong they actually are, they're a little bit of a disappointment in how weak they are, to be honest. I would hope they would have been a little bit of a size up from the Aerodims, maybe at least on par with the Wing Guards. They probably didn't want you guys to feel like you had to build them um, right this very moment. Maybe they wanted, they knew that you know, the drop rates weren't going to be the best from uh, from Nameless, but give you the ability to go ahead and grab them from Nameless uh, in case you're in that situation that I described at the very, very beginning. Um, it is worth mentioning, I do believe the upgrade system is not really going to screw you over as far as like getting your weapon early or anything along those lines. I'm pretty sure they're just going to upgrade with everything attached. This is a big problem back when uh, back in the Kavaris region when we dealt with the Kaiser weapons for the first time when it went from rocks to Kaiser and, you know, all of the augments got overwritten, fixes didn't transfer over, and everyone was very upset about that. And they actually mentioned um, in a later post that they would never have that process happen again. And if they had another upgrade weapon, that it would retain all of the augments, it would retain everything from the very start. So uh, this is kind of like their chance to prove that that's the case. And we will have to see if that's how things end up working out. I'm pretty confident in saying that I believe that's how things will work out. So I'm not too concerned as far as that process goes. Anyway, that. That's it. Like if you enjoyed the video. So you want to keep up with more. Thanks to the channel members. You guys are awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. And as for our question for the video, if you guys saw yesterday's stream, you know that unfortunately, Blue Protocol announced EOS over in Japan, meaning there will be no global release that we know of as of yet, as in like it, global release is basically canceled. No Blue Protocol anymore. So my question for you guys is how many of you were actually looking forward to playing Blue Protocol? Did you guys have any plans? Did you guys get a chance to play JP at all um, to understand uh, what you were experiencing or anything along those lines? I know I personally kind of had the plan to uh, jump into Blue Protocol before its release. Um, well, we did already. Technically, we snuck in with a bunch of other people that were playing, um, got a bunch of information about the early levels and the early leveling process and how that worked out and was going to jump in and get used to it again before global release uh, when Blue Protocol was on the way to kind of just get a better idea of things so we could do something similar that we did back in base PSO2 when it came to global. Fortunately, that is now gone, so there will be none of that. So very, very sad, but I'm curious to think. And if you guys were playing or you had the chance to play or you were planning on playing, what class are you going to play? So that's pretty much it. Anyway, thanks for watching all the end. Take care, my friends. Peace out.